Amazon's ALEXA gets owned, Instagram has been conducting illegal activities, allegedly, and new Russian malware attacks Linux. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Big announcement that I have been waiting for for a very long time. When I hit my next goal on Patreon, I will be signing up for their merchandise tool. I mentioned this in previous episodes, but I'm gonna mention it again. I just got access to it about a month ago. This will mean that you will get reoccurring merchandise and swag added to existing tiers and a new merch tier will be added as well. Now, Patreon will take care of all the shipping worldwide automatically, which means that you will get physical rewards like t-shirts, shirts and coffee mugs, I've mentioned a hoodie before, stickers, a whole lot more, much faster than if I was doing it myself. The link is down below to sign up on Patreon and I will also make an announcement when that goal is reached. We're a little over 80%, like 84, 85% of the way there. So ThreatWire is super close to unlocking swag rewards. It's super exciting because honestly, I want this swag myself too. So that's a thing. Until then, on to the news. Mad props to Joel this week on Patreon, who basically did all this research for me because I ended up choosing all of the top news stories that he had linked. So thank you so much, Joel. Let's go ahead and talk about Amazon's elect group, A-L-E-X-A. Oh. Researchers at Checkpoint found several flaws that affect the virtual assistant made by Amazon that could allow an attacker to remotely access personal data like home addresses or history stored within the device platform. An attacker would need the user to take action by clicking on a malicious link for this to work. Now, the vulnerabilities are web application issues found within Amazon's ALEXA's subdomains. Each of these vulnerabilities were disclosed in June of 2020, and Amazon did fix them, so the public disclosure was posted on Thursday. There is no proof of this ever being used in the wild, so you should be safe so far. Now, the issues include a cross-origin resource sharing misconfiguration and a cross-site scripting flaw. The researchers use a script to bypass SSL pinning, which allows them to see in clear text traffic transmitted between the application and the device itself. This allowed them to discover the misconfigured cores, that CORS policy, which means an attacker could bypass any blocks set in place that only allow a user to access certain domains. They then found the cross-site scripting flaw could be chained with the cross-origin resource sharing issue, which could return a listing of installed skills, as well as a secret token that could allow the attacker to take actions as if they were the user. So if an attacker got a user to click on some kind of malicious link, taking them to a domain that has code injection capabilities, they would get that list of skills or apps installed on the Echo device. They could also install new skills, and they could take actions like the victim user, and that could give the attacker access to voice history data. So TLDR, an attacker could inject code in a subdomain like order.amazon.com, which would then extract a security token tied to the ALEXA account, and that would unlock all the data for the attacker. As long as your application and the device are updated, they've already been patched. But if another attack like this one comes along, it's wise to remember to delete your voice data and recordings on a reoccurring basis. You could also set up your Echo device to delete voice recordings automatically after three months or 18 months within the settings. Now, I realize that most folks in this audience do not probably do not have Echo devices, but family or friends, they might. So while this may not affect you, it could affect someone you know. I've got two similar news stories to share about Instagram. First, Facebook, who owns Instagram, is facing a lawsuit in Redwood City, California, alleging that they collected, stored, and profited from biometric data from 100 million Instagram users without the user's knowledge or consent. 
A Facebook spokesperson stated that this is a baseless claim and that Instagram does not use face recognition technology, while the lawsuit complains that Facebook's collection of biometric data violates state privacy laws, which could mean that they would have to pay up to $5,000 per violation. According to the lawsuit, Facebook did not start informing Instagram users of biometric collection until earlier this year. Just last month, Facebook offered to pay $650 million to settle a similar lawsuit about illegally collecting biometric data through the photo tagging tool on Facebook. Now, while these two are very similar, they are not the same case. Instagram was also in the news this week due to their data retention. A security researcher found that Instagram was storing deleted photos and private messages long after that user had removed them, at least a year later. The researcher found these when they had downloaded their data from the application and saw it included deleted photos and DMs. The issue was reported to Instagram in October of 2019 via the company's bug bounty program, and Instagram awarded them $6,000 dollars for finding the issue. Now he found this flaw by using the download your data feature, which was launched in 2018 to comply with GDPR policies. While Instagram says that it takes about 90 days to scrub data from their servers, this data was over a year old. The issue was fixed earlier this month with no signs of abuse. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Check out these brand new Hush Puppy Perk Level Patron Fur Babies. They are so cute. Thank you so much for sending them in. I love them. Keep them coming. Also, a new perk has been added. Now, as a subscriber, you will get access to action alerts. So anytime a new vulnerability is announced or a new breach has occurred, I will share details over on Patreon so you can update, patch, and find those flaws ASAP. In fact, I just released and announced three new vulnerabilities, so make sure to check those out over on the Patreon page. This is alongside the current goal of an audio podcast because there is so much to cover in security and privacy. I never have time to discuss everything in these episodes. So if you wanna see me cover more InfoSec news as an audio podcast, or eventually as a second episode of ThreatWire each week, check out the next Patreon goals to see how you can make that happen. On Thursday, the FBI and NSA posted a joint advisory and security alert detailing a new strain of Linux malware called Drovo Rub that they believe is being distributed by Russia's Fancy Bear or Apt28 hacking group. This group has popped up many times over the past decade for their hacking campaigns, and they are known to be a government-backed group. The agencies found the malware belongs to Apt28 due to their reuse of the same servers for previous operations. The malware could allow attackers to plant backdoors in hacked networks and contains many components. Drova Rub includes an implant, a kernel module rootkit, a file transfer tool, a port forwarding module, and a command and control server. Now these features can allow an attacker to steal files and remotely control a victim machine. Since it can be used as a rootkit, this makes it very hard to detect. It's a stealthy new malware, hence the advisory to inform both public and private sector IT admins. Now, while the agencies did share a 45-page PDF going in-depth about the malware and mitigations, it's like super long. It is linked below, though, in case you are bored. It's a very long read. They did not share the attack vector, nor how long the malware has been actively used, or if any companies have been targeted, and if so, who those companies may be. The NSA and the FBI both recommend organizations update Linux systems to kernel version 3.7 or later and set up rules to probe for file hiding behaviors. Now, before I leave, I want to say thank you to Nim13, Patrick G, Shady Meme Dealer, <laughs> Joel S, Cole P, Mike E, Gears of Resistance, Zach B, Michael, Chunky Monkey, Paul Clue, Joel F, Sean W, Haran M, Andrew V, Keith N, Lars T S, and Frank, who joined the Patreon team this week. You guys are so awesome. All of y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for that. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see y'all on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.